voyage of the uh, iPhone 15, John? Yes. Yes, it is. All right. Well, good job. It's not well, always easy. So we have something to talk about, which I'm thinking of. Well, you go right ahead because we have going to get right to it because we have a short, a short schedule today. Well, you know, we were talking about the importance of belonging. Mm. And in the process of that, I got to thinking about what we have done to our heritage as far as the Native American community is concerned. You know, we have tried to, uh, I don't know what we've done, but, it, it, uh, but it's, been, it's not been good. <laughs> And I think it's time that we reopened our minds and our hearts to the heritage that we have from the Native American communities. Absolutely. They're all around us and we have just pushed them back and pushed them back. And it's time we call them forward and let them know that they, they belong in our hearts. They belong in our hearts minds they belong in, with us in everything that we do i agree um and i just wonder if they if this is a tricky conversation but because i know that i mean we have been horrible like awful just absolutely horrible and you know, the level of resentment and um, all of the things that I can only imagine would be on that side, it would be a little bit tricky to just say, you know, if, if you know, we come in and say, okay, well, yeah, we screwed that up and now we want to make amends, you know, that would, that can be a little bit hard to open your heart up again and go, yeah, really? Are you really going to take me in? Are you really going to hear what we have to say with all the bad things that you have done to us. Well, that's, you know, yeah, we, we've shut so many doors that it's up to us to re reopen them in a loving way mm. that lets them know that there are those who of us who that doesn't mean our whole culture is going to open up its heart or do right. What it, we need to but there are those who love our native american heritage and love what we have inherited from them right you know it's it's just it's truly awesome and so uh i think it's time we reach above our uh past and into our true future of who we as human beings are you know we don't need to be stuck like i could be stuck uh, where uh, when i was a kid and the little indian kids would rub my arm to try and get the white off you know that's that kind of uh stuff that, that we have created in our uh humanity mm -hmm. needs to be lo looked at as as we as individuals look at it and reclaim our true heritage and so how do you how would you if you you're telling me this today yeah. so what do you think i could do today to make a difference well I, first of all i i say i'm sorry for mm -hmm. what we have done I'm I'm really sorry for what we have done, but I don't know the extent to which it has affected the lives and and uh, everything that our Native American communities have lived through and are still going through. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I my heart goes out to them. My heart goes out to the friends that I have from the Native American community, but also all those who are in, who in the past have been, uh, well, 
in Indian, Badnam, given a bad name or, or whatever you want to call it. Mm -hmm. And we, we gave them smallpox for crying out loud. Right. You know, there are so many things that we have done to our Native American community. But you know what I love is that the, the, in the media, people of Native American uh, background are beginning to show up as some of the leaders. And I love it because that's where they belong. Right. Well, interesting that you're bringing this up because this weekend is uh, Indigenous Peoples Weekend. Wow, I didn't know that. Yeah. Good. Yeah. So, you know, even just having the reverence in our own hearts throughout this weekend for the greater good, that's one place to start. You know, if we all just start shifting how we feel in our hearts, kind of like you know, the, I don't think I mentioned to you the when I went and did the global walking meditation. No. Um, was it last weekend? Yeah, I think it was last weekend, actually. Um, on Saturday. Yeah, I think I did. There were 142 countries that were involved and I think 160,000 people. Um, and it was through Joe Dispenza's work. And uh -huh. so signed up, you were given the the meditation to download for free you put it on your phone and at 10 o'clock eastern wherever you were in the world you were supposed to begin this walking meditation that lasted for an hour so when you think about 160,000 people all opening their hearts all walking for the change which was what this one was about um, it was a pretty cool, even though I was walking by myself, knowing that I was walking with 160,000 people was just, you knew that the energy could shift. You knew, you know, that something can shift in that moment. Isn't that wonderful? And just today I found out that, uh, Bulgaria has asked for a copy of my book yeah, in in, in their language. So, you know, uh, we're reaching out to each other past the boundaries that we have created in the past. I mm. mean, they, they're, they're foolish, silly things that we have done and they've been very cruel. So uh, as we can reach to each other in love and laughter, you know, and and be able to put it into a whole di different dimension. And that's what you're talking about, what you did with the walk. Mm -hmm. Well, so I'm just thinking, you know, what could we all do over this? Um, I know that we have a global audience, but in the United States, it's, you know, was called Columbus Day weekend, which we no longer call it that anymore. So now it's Indigenous Peoples Weekend. Um, you know, what can we do over the course of Friday, Saturday? No, I think it's Saturday, Sunday, Monday, in reverence of our Native American people that we, you know, we owe our lives because the land was theirs. Yes, yes. Well, I think that we can talk about it to each other and talk about the people, to the people we talk to, and mm -hmm. but we ourselves can bring that that whole culture back into our um, thinking, you know, and mm -hmm. our loving and the thing that we care about. Mm -hmm. And as each one of us who even uh, here listens to this or begins to begin think, thinking about it, works with it, I think that we can love each other and bring ourselves back into a loving, happy uh, relationship and dance it out. Oh, I like that. Well, and so much of what the Native American, uh, you know, the indigenous people, wherever you are, um, you know, it was really all about the land and nature and understanding the cycles of life and honoring the spirits of all the things. Um, 
which is such a beautiful and easy, I mean, just go for a walk outside and pay attention to nature. And pay attention to the four directions, you know, mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. as you do that, you include the entire world. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I think I will for sure have a fire. I am definitely um, all about the fire. So okay. we have a big, we have a big <laughs> fire pit in our yard that is right on the edge of the of the ocean. So wow. we often fire, and that's an easy way to then honor the four directions. Say a little prayer to the four directions, and throw the stick in the fire. And and. Each one of us, wherever we are, where we belong at the present time, because that's where we are, mm -hmm. we can put our arms around those who have been excluded from our mm. uh, place. And because, uh, because we want them to belong with us, because we are reaching to them as part of our uh, loving, laughing, dancing community, which has gone through the suffering and, and isn't done with that because it's still very real in many, many places. But it doesn't mean that, that that's where we belong. We belong together with mm. that as our past, mm -hmm. recognizing what we have done and say, I'm so sorry, mm. you know? Yeah. Because, you know, and, and Jesus said all from the cross, he said, forgive them for they know not what they do. We, do, we as, as we were doing our badness, most of us didn't, as people, as human beings, didn't realize how bad our badness was. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. How deep it, we were hurting people. Oh. Um, somebody is saying, Angela, thank you for speaking on behalf of the Native Americans. We have lived in Santa Fe and it is the most special city and they are who make the city so special. Wonderful. Yes. And then some Somebody else, Mary, is saying, dance it out. Choctaw Indians dance as ceremonial. There you That's, go. Yeah. All I'll right. take my walker and my walker and I'll dance. <laughs> I love that. That's great. Yeah. No, yeah. You take, you, so, uh, what made you, uh, what brought that? Unless it's just that it's the Indigenous Peoples Weekend and you are just picking up on the vibration of that. I, yeah, I wasn't aware that that's what it was, <laughs> but I got to thinking about belonging, the word that we used last week, right. you know, about the young people are looking for their place of belonging and elderly people. But then I got to thinking, yeah, but there's a whole other group which includes young and old. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, it's just, it's bringing up a conversation I had yesterday with um, one of my daughters from another mother, is how I like to call them. Yeah. Um, and she doesn't feel like she belongs in her family. There, there have been some things that have happened along the way that her family has sort of, she, it reminded me of when you talk about Dorcas, because yes. she said, I feel like a threat away. I yeah. feel disposable to my family and they're not, in order for me to come back into the family, I have to be the one to reach out. Like they're not coming for me. And what spurred it was there's a big family gathering this weekend and nobody really filled her in about what was happening. And she just felt so sad. And I like, yes. Yeah, so the big not belonging and how we have shunned the Native American people and then we have the day-to-day -day not belonging with the people that are right next to us every single day that don't feel like they belong anywhere. And right. It, like, it just broke my heart. I mean, it just... <sighs> it's so sad. But the sadness 
can be danced out. It can be, you know, the first thing about it is to recognize it. Mm. I think if we don't, if we're not looking for it, if we're not looking for what, uh, what we, the places where we have made mistakes, you know, if we're not looking for those, we won't see them. But if we're looking for them, we can see them and make amends, do just whatever it is that we have uh, knit, a, knit a something or do something or dance a dance right. or just sing a song or whatever to reclaim that love that flows when you awaken to it and are will are willing to accept it as the great healer if we can just you know first of all we have to recognize it or we're not, you know we have right. to be looking for it and if we're not looking for it we don't see it but if we can say oh yeah it'll come to us and we'll understand it and we'll have a dream or someone will introduce us to something, or something will happen, or you know, that we'll it'll come to us if we're looking for it and longing for it, it will come to us, and then we can share it with the people that we've offended, the people that we have uh, not really put our love and songs around, mm -hmm. and in include them in our hearts mm. and let it be real so mary is saying life is what we make it my mother didn't want me that's on her i'm still here in 68 and would and do love the dance yeah yeah so do you think uh from a karmic perspective do you think people come in with with past lifetimes of abandonment or having abandoned themselves and so they end up in a life where they are abandoned so that they can own that self-abandonment it makes sense to me mm. you know how else do we recognize it right you know how do how does it become part of our uh, belonging if it was isn't something that we can recognize, you know, we've talked about the man or the person who was born blind and we try to tell them about mm. the color green, you know, if, if, if you've never experienced it, you don't know it, you can't experience it. But if right. you've experienced it and maybe it'll be, it's lifetimes back, but maybe back there sometime you really did experience this and you know how it feels. Mm. That's why it feels so uh, important right now, mm. is that I think that we as um, a nation are going through all kinds of uh, wackadoodle stuff that we're trying to understand. But if we can accept the fact that we do the best we can, we belong where we belong, and then we'll accept the ones who belong where we are and mm. put our arms and our hearts around the ones who have been not just neglected, but pushed out of where they belong. Right. You know, there's a difference. If you neglect something, that's bad. But if you push out something that really belongs there, that's terrible. Mm. So it made me also think of, you know, just talking about the Native Americans. So I'm guessing that that could be true from a cultural perspective, that a culture, and they also have a karmic past, like yeah. the United yeah. States has a karma, the globe, the earth has a, you know, like all of it. I mean, in my understanding. Yeah. Um, and not to say that that means that there's nothing for us to do because it's on them, 
um, there's still, like you said, I love that. There's still the opening, the softening, the welcoming. Yeah. Of, you know, and that's all I could share with um, this young woman last night was also um, what we were just saying about a karmic past and creating what you want now. You can't ever change another human. You can only change yourself. And that is just like what we're talking about is softening our hearts, um, owning our past regrets, owning what we have done to another, even though it wasn't physically us doing the thing to another, we are part of the global community that has done horrible things to other people. And it's reflected in what we're thinking about mm. and what we're reaching out to and where our love uh, is reaching past the created boundaries that says you know you know this is what you love and this is what you don't right no it's not that way you find we find our own space and that's what we work with mm. and that's, that's how and then then we belong and then things belong to us you know uh, uh, I had just found out that somebody from another c uh, country has sent me something that has never arrived at my house. It doesn't, somehow or other, uh, it has gone someplace in, in the mail, you know. So it, it hasn't found its place of belonging. And um, that's just a, 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 you know, a thing. Mm -hmm. But the reality that 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 things come and go and sometimes we just have to wait or sometimes we let them go sometimes they'll come back mm -hmm. sometimes it's just a a something that has been um stuck under a pillow someplace and you don't know that it's there you know <laughs> it's it's a in the process of cleaning up our own house and our own way of doing things, we come across these areas that have been neglected within our own process, as well as within the way in which we have created the world around us. So as we begin to see these things and look at them and clean up, clean our windows and, you know, do the things that need to be done personally mm -hmm. to make the things that did not, have not belonged to us before come in and belong to us if that's what their longing is. Mm. But that's, it depends on what our longing is, you know. We belong for what our inner soul is longing for? Oof. And that's a deep question. What is our inner soul longing for? Right. What is, is that innermost desire? What is the soul calling? I think that's why I started talking about this this morning is because there's a part of me that really, really wants to get this process of what we've done to our our brothers and sisters in the Native American community brought to the fore and looked at and dealt with. Mm. So we'll see. We'll, it'll go as the way it needs to go. Right. And then we can dance it out. Right. Would you um, say that when you found your voice, do you think that that was also you finding your inner longing or, or you had the sense of the inner knowing, the inner longing, your soul's calling? You just never were at that place where you could speak it out. That, yes, but also... Uh there's some coconut time, you know, there's a time for everything. And uh, it could have just been empty words uh, when it, 
I tried to speak it before or something, but right now is the right time. Mm -hmm. It's the right time. It's the right time to speak it. It'll we we can put our arms around each other and dance our dance. So it's it's whatever we weren't able to do before and whatever we did wrong before, we can as we look at it for ourselves, we can accept the wrongness of it or the the pain that went with it and deal with that in a way that allows us to forgive ourselves for the way that we didn't understand it at that time and to accept the reality that we're all created with the same needs and the same longings Right. As we begin to put our arms around each other, that is taken care of. But it doesn't eliminate the fact that it's still part of our belonging, which we have to live through, not just try to get over. See, there's a difference in just saying, well, okay, we, we accept that. And, and so we just, all right. No, you don't get over these things. You live through them and you become aware within your own being what it is that you're talking about. When you're talking about that kind of pain about being pushed out or not accepted and so on, that's, that's what we're talking about. And, uh, and that's the pain that is in the process of not being glorified, but being lived through and understood because all of us in some time in our ancient history uh, uh, process have found ourselves not belonging and going through that uh, empty house process of, I, this is not the house I belong in, mm. and and into the pl space where we walk through, and then find how we can get. Maybe you don't belong in that house. Maybe we do belong in that house. Maybe where our longing is, where our belonging is, and if we, we can accept we are as we are I can accept my white skin and accept the brown skin and the red skin and red all of the skins that are so amazingly beautiful and let it be one human race mm. which is what it is I love this conversation and I feel like you know the the ultimate belonging is belonging to oneself. And you were talking about, yeah. you know, owning that and, and owning what we have done or what we have been party to, or, and I, I, and I feel like this is a, another conversation cause we could go on for this. So maybe we'll continue this next week, but um, because there's so much shame and judgment and self-loathing that people feel that they don't even want to look. Yeah. Because yeah. It hurts it, too much. It hurts it too hurts much. They can't even forgive themselves right. for what it, and so it's just best if I don't look and I'm just gonna keep on rolling because you know, it would just but but we've all done the things. We've all not oh, been, yeah. all said hurtful thing you know, we've all done the things. Um because we're human and we have egos and they get in the way and they get us trapped and you know it's complicated um, and lots of times we don't know that we're doing them so right you know it's when it's called to our attention and uh we're able to see what the reality is mm. it, it's liberating it's freedom it's joy it's gladness 
I agree. So we had a couple comments in here. Hang on, let me go back. So Angela is saying maybe we can have a conversation on the trail. So maybe we can do that and add that into next week. And then Mary is saying sometimes, wait, I need my glasses for this one. Sometimes we don't know we are longing. I played woodwinds and haven't for a long time. My 12 year old granddaughter asked me if I had a clarinet she could use. I took her up to my storage and I have one of each woodwind. She was shocked and I played for her. Wow, she said, Grandma, I never knew. That's a yeah. beautiful uh -huh. thing. <laughs> yeah. That's a thing to have shared. Yeah. Well, the next, uh, I, I welcome people to, uh, you know, connect with us with your stories and what we can do to uh, continue continue this longing right you know in a joyful way mm -hmm. you know like that grandmother getting her uh clarinet out and finding these other things that made her granddaughter so happy right right and and i just think it's such a deep and rich conversation the longing the belonging like yeah it just makes my heart swell even right. saying the belonging right like yeah it's yeah hello we're done john because we had a little you were busy this morning and you had an interview at our yeah. scheduled time so i hope that went well it did it did but good, good. Um, um, and uh, we will reconvene next week. So back to Absolutely. our Absolutely. <laughs> um, maybe we'll continue this conversation. But until then, I hope everybody has an amazing weekend. And let's do our best to honor right. the indigenous people of wherever you are living, wherever you find yourself belonging at this time. Uh, let's have a few moments of reverence for for it all for it all yeah that's right yeah, yeah. yeah. well thank all you right. for bringing that up it was a lovely lovely topic it was yeah needed absolutely absolutely all right gladys well i love you and love you too all right bye bye, -bye. thank you for always getting us together it's wonderful wherever he is <laughs> and uh all right i will see you next week Bye. Thanks.